Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are. This is our Hukulo Saturday weekly webinar. We have um, quite a few people with us. And um, I wanted to introduce everybody in the room. Today is the 24th of September, 2016. So with us today, we have um, Allie, Angie, Astrid, Christine, uh, David, we have Jim, of course, Ina, um, Jasmina, Jess444, Jonah, Khan, Karen, Liliana, Liney, Max, Michelle, Pavel, Sam, Sheer, Thea, and myself, Bree. And I'm sure people will pop in and out as we continue here today. Um, so good morning, Jim, and good morning, everyone. Jim, you might be having some video issues, but maybe that'll be resolved later on. Um, yes. <laughs> we have some requests this morning for uh, channeling. First, let me go through the calendar of events and just um, read off what we are expecting, what's coming up in the next few days and weeks here as far as what we have going on for Human Colony. Um, tomorrow, the 25th of September, we do have the Reiki 1B class. And that'll be with Jim. And also, I believe, Max, you're going to be there as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. Max is there. It's All Jim right. and Max's class, yes. Wonderful. So both of you will be doing the 1B Reiki. So people, please go to humancolony.org if you would like to sign up for that. And we'll be happy to get you um, signed up. It's $50, and Reiki is life-changing for everyone and anyone can do it. So that will be 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, then also on October 1st, which is Saturday, Jim is gonna be coming back in for our weekly Hukulo webinar. And uh, the following week, October 8th, Saturday, we have Karen. Oh, I gotta mute somebody here, hold on. We got what sounds like a baby. Good morning, baby. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So um, other than that, we just have, uh, oh, also the channel panel. The channel panel is also happening Saturday, October 8th. Um, the channel panel will be yeah. from 2 p.m. to 11 Eastern Standard Time, and that's actually Saturday, October 8th, and October 9th. And Jim, you're going to be a part of that, aren't you? Yes, I'm on October 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is so exciting. I can't wait to see you be a part of that. Um, those channel panels are amazing. It's incredible that people are getting together and channeling for so long. <laughs> that's that's well, going to be a really good hour. Time. There's 14 of us, so yeah. we each have an hour. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so, oh, and Karen had just been asking, yes, you are on, on October 8th, or yes, October 8th, Saturday. <laughs> That's uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just like our weekly webinars have been moved to. Yes. So, um, I think Maybe. that's all we have. Oh, I'm sorry? Oh, in my room, we have several people here today I, I will introduce when you're done. Okay, wonderful. Actually, um, yes, please let us know who is there. Okay, Barbara is here. Uh, Diane is here. Sandy is here. Erica is here. Angela is here. And Raymond is here. And David and Lana were here, but they stepped out. They'll be back, I think. Oh, wonderful. So that's who we have here. Wow, you have a full house this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, your video has come back in, so I guess it's going to be going in and out maybe. Um, Max, All right. you wanted friend. to mention some things, right? Yes. Uh, so we invite more. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Yep. Yes. So we invite more volunteers for questions like thank you brief for hosting it today we we have now more uh, uh 
uh, needs who would press buttons and guide, uh, moderate the webinar. So people who are good with computers and uh, with timing, uh, uh, org, max at humancalling.org and um, join us as volunteers to, to run the to do administration of the uh, And thank you everyone who is helping with that. Also, we need help with posting the webinars on social sites. It's uh, easy work, but it is it takes time and it takes um, when you get the links, to post the links to um, sites like Facebook and Google. So we need help with that. This is all. Yeah, also uh, wanted to add in there. Thank you, Max. Um, if people would like to help us with volunteering to transcribe any of the channelings that we do, webinars, or um, especially blessings and galactic poetry and whatnot, please let us know. You can go to humancolony.org and you can contact Max or Slava or anyone else in Human Colony who will direct you the right way to um, get those videos transcribed because especially for non-native English speakers and others, it's very helpful. People don't always have time to watch a video. <laughs> so um, yeah, let us know if you want to help out with that or anything else. We are, you know, just doing this for the betterment of our collective human experience. So please volunteer and help out. Um, with that said, I think we can get started with blessings this morning. I um, know I would like to do a blessing, and I think a few other people had said they wanted to. Oh, well, Max just left, but we'll figure it out. So um, does anyone have anything else they wanted to add, any upcoming events they want to talk about before we get started here? Um, I know we did have some requests that were coming in for different people, different beings and whatnot. Um, Jim, I'm not sure if you heard, but in the side chat, people were saying uh, also to Kerr, lots of people were asking for Bashar, um, Queen of Sheba, and uh, let's see if there were any others, Suram the Atlantean. Yeah, Anybody so we have... you want to request anyone? Yes. Yeah, I do. Errol. Oh, Anubis? Is that? Errol? Who is Errol? Um, a being from another okay. planet. She and did the Roswell interview. Yeah, she did the Roswell interview. So. Oh, I know who that is. Anybody else? Um, more people are saying Cryon, also Silver Pleiadian. I would like to request John Lennon. He's been on my mind a lot, and uh, especially after the amazing experiences we had at the retreat gym. Um, I had that song stuck in my head yesterday, and it was like very <laughs> emotional. So, I see. Excellent. Yeah, I want to request John Lennon. Yeah. John hasn't been here um, for a while, but you know he's around. So. Of course he is. All right, wonderful then. Uh, with that said, we can get started with blessings. I will go first and please um, everyone else, if anyone else wants to do a blessing, just go ahead right afterwards and then Jim can get started. So let's see here. Yashonoto this is a time of many endings and many beginnings. 
Do not be discouraged. It is a difficult time because when there are many endings and many beginnings, that means much change. When there is much change, it is for the betterment of everyone for the most part. You may not see this at first, but in the long run, you will see how things will be working out. Just go with it at this time. Make sure that you are understanding the changes that are happening within yourself and within your communities. The world is changing, your species is changing, and the th this is a time of great revolution in many senses. Be aware. Thank you, Jim. I love the translations you give. I appreciate it. That is so awesome. Um, anyone else would like to go next? Otherwise, I think, Jim, we can move right on in and get started. Excellent. Let's see who comes through. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I see that I heard your request to curb a shy cry on the Queen of Sheba. I heard uh, they, what was the name? Errol, Errol who was, who did the Area 51 interviews i think it was a female isn't that yeah. it was a female that did that um there are many that want to come through there is a lot of different beings here today with a lot of different messages and um the the blessing that you gave at the beginning was very very much a part of what they're doing right now they're talking about the changes that are coming they're talking about the uh the new energies that are with us they're talking about all these different things i've been bombarded at night sometimes recently with a lot of different thoughts about a lot of different things and a lot of different scenarios that seem very unusual to me so but i'm wondering if they're just symbolic and not real if you know what i mean but because a lot of these things just don't seem possible but they can be a symbol of something else, which I also figured out. So we'll see as time goes on and if, as they give me more interpretations to different things. But there are many different things changing, including our numerology systems, our astrology, and different things that are all changing because of the time that we are in right now. We are in new energies, we are in new thought processes, as they said, a new revolution of events, of, of changing in the, in the planet, in the way that humankind react with one another. As you see, there's much violence coming up. This is, a, this is one of the times when violence shows that there is change. It is sad that it has to be that way, but when there is much change going on in a culture or on a planet, it explodes with violence first before it gets brighter. Darkest before the dawn, you've heard that. Well, in this case, it is true. There, the violence is not over yet. We've just seen some of it in the last recent months that have, has been very shocking and very uh, gave, gave turmoil to society, not only on our, our or, um, USA side, but also around the world. There's been all kinds of incidences reported that are stirring up countries within themselves. Of course, the, inf the information that's stirring up our country is not always the, what is reported to other countries. And what is in other countries is not always reported to our country. But believe me, there are many things, terrorist actions with, and groups of thoughts that are the energy has stirred up the violence in people because there is a change coming and the violence wants to take over before the peace comes. Now, do not expect always violence, because that is not always what will be. But the beginning of this is 
revolutionary. Somehow I had to say that. I don't know why that just all came through. So uh, that was channeled from somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where because I wasn't planning to say that. However, let's see who comes in. I'm going to do a um, short meditation and um, uh, we'll see who comes through. It's interesting that Bashar and Cryon were both asked for at, at the same time because they're both, both very long in the business and they've had a lot of experience and they have a lot of truth to bring forward. So I will ask the best and the most knowledgeable and those people that have the best information to come. Thank you. Give me one moment, I will meditate. Greetings to all. This is Bashar. Good morning, Bashar. Thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure. I just would like to remind people that the hybridization programs that you all speak about are coming to a new phase. There are those that are coming beforehand to check out the earth, to let us all know and to let the galaxy know if you are ready for the hybrid children and the hybrid races to come to your planet now i've spoke about this already and i will speak about it again when i travel but let me tell you now what i know and what i can tell you at this time because it is an interesting time on your planet. Yes, there will be changes. And you know that I have spoken very clearly about change. I cannot tell you the future. That is not who, who I am. I cannot do that. No one can do that for you. Things have not been completely worked out. Many of these things are going to happen. And we know that many of these thought processes are already in the on route to you so but the hybridization program is important for many reasons it will be helping the universe the galaxy and your planet in particular because you are that of the future but let me tell you there are those that are coming that are checking out the planet for first contact for hybridization processes, for those that need to understand, understand what hybridization is and if they can live among humans. There will be much more information about this coming, but speaking through this individual, that's all I can do for now. Is there some questions for me before I move forward? Yes. Yes. My name's Raymond. Raymond. I've been wondering, why have people been not sleeping so good lately? Oh, that's an easy answer. It's the fourth dimensional energy anomaly that you talk about. I don't speak of it because our people do not want us to really speak about it too much 
We are aware of it. It is just something that is natural. You must go through it. Why make a big deal about it? But it does cause you to restless until you get used to it, until you find out that it is part of who you are in many senses. And when it's done, it will be done. But you will have a residue effect. It will have awakened you to some effect, to some experience, and to, I'm not sure I'm saying it correctly, but it will have awakened you to a new heightened level of fourth dimension. All right. That is all. Very well. Other questions? Hi. Yes, Bashar. I have a quick question regarding the hybridization programs and um, the uh, idea of first contact, as we yes. understand it to be. Um, is it still, are, is the likelihood still there that it will probably be the yeah, yell that will be coming down for first contact worldwide initially? Are there, because I have heard of a lot of other beings trying yes. to. This is what's happening. It was originally discussed that the Yu Yu should be first because of certain features that they have. They look more human, they're less scary, blah, blah, blah. But there are other species that have decided that they are not prepared enough to, uh, um, the Yu Yu are not prepared enough to come first. But yes, they should in many respects because of who they are and how close they are in human uh, DNA, etc. However, other species would like to take control of this and bring their own kind of first contact to the Earth and feel that it might be a greater success than what they feel that the Yu Yil have planned. This is a matter of opinion. And of course, opinions run vastly different among different species, as you know, because they all have their own point of view, point of view, how the world is going to react to first contact. Now, your first contact for your planet will be extraordinary because why because your governments already know about alien existence and how many there are around in the the solar system they see that they are that many of them have left the area for the momentarily momentarily but there are still many species that are still around your planet and they they're worried that there may be an attack however they also know that there are friendly ones and they speak to certain aspects of the, the galaxy and of the alliances frequently. So therefore, they know that these particular aliens will not attack, but they are not familiar with them all. So, I'm getting off track. But yes, first contact will be with you yell at this point it is still set that they should be first it is still set closest to humans as anyone can be but there are others that are in in disagreement with how they will do it however there are seven or eight or nine different scenarios that have been presented to different councils, different alliances for first contact, still, at this point, the Yu Yil are still first. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, the, it seems like the humans, um, how do I word this? <laughs> we, might have a little bit of a say, but it's really not up to us because we're just kind of the... But uh, you do. You understand? You do have a say because we will not come and interrupt a culture without the government's permission. 
Now, I, as who I am and what species that I bring forth, be part of your first contact. But we will assert that we are behind it. We confirm that we agree that there will be a time that it is necessary. But that time is not yet. Yes, okay. That makes sense. Um, I, what, what I was meaning to say is it's like we're able to maybe ask for certain races, but ultimately it, it also depends on what's compatible and everything. So I didn't mean to say that it's not up to us because obviously you guys can't come here. Well, yes, but it's up to us as our off-world people to present ourselves in a way that is perfectly presentable to humans in a non-frightening way, if possible. Yeah. If possible. There will always be those that will be frightened. There will always be those that will be skeptical. There will always be those that will not understand. It is with every culture. Every culture has this group of people that will not understand and will be frightened and will push away the understanding. But yet, the whole of the cultures on the planet must be in alignment for us to come. Yes, certainly. Okay. Um, very interesting. So in regards to the hybridization program, because uh, we were just talking about this, and then Krellick, you can ask next. Uh, Michelle had a quick question. She said, are the Yael part of human colony hybridization program that they try to keep secret? And how many other species of hybrids are being hidden from us and why? That is many questions altogether. Let me say this. Yuyil is part of human colony, yes. They have, they are part of that alliance. Secrets. Every species has their own secrets. But that's not necessarily against you. Your own secrets against each other. You have secrets no one knows. Why do you keep secrets? Not necessarily to harm anyone. And that's true of species as well. We all have our secrets. We cannot, we cannot divulge all our information to you because it will be misused. So of course, there must be secrets from you. You understand? So that does not mean we are evil or we are making plans against you. We just have our own personalities, our own understandings of who you are. And there are some things we just can't tell you. Understandable. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have a question from Krellick. Hello. Okay. Continue. Um, I wanted to ask about the fall of 2016. If if the fourth dimensional energies is what you were talking about when you said everything will change in the fall of 2016. No. No. no I'm talking of the things. You will see there are other things that are coming that will change the perception of people on this land, in other lands, because what happens on this land changes the perception. The whole earth will be affected by what I am saying and I'm talking about. Just as the fourth dimensional energy has had some effect on everything, these situations, these things will have effect on the world. Uh, thank you for that. You are welcome. Thank you. We have a question from Sheer. Sheer. Hello, Michelle. Greetings. 
Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's been a long time since we spoke. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, you once said in one of your predictions that it might be possible for have um, peace in the Middle East by 2020. Is that still on the table, as you say? Yes. So, can you tell me when are we going to see major changes in Israel? There are already major changes on their way in Israel and around the world. But in Israel, it will happen within, I cannot tell you how many of your Earth years, but I can tell you that it is already coming. It is already on its way. It is already uh, beginning. So do not worry about that. As time moves forward, you will see what I mean. You will know that the predictions are there for their own moment in time, so to speak. They are what they are. I see. When, uh, when Liav child you here in Israel, do you know who is the abyss? Obviously. Yes. Do you so, want me to speak about that? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say about that? Ah, when I spoke with him a year and a half ago, yes. he told us about, uh, we asked you about the election, and he said the election was rigged, and they're going to discover it in a year and a half. And it's yeah. actually this month. So is that one of the major changes? No. There has been many rigged elections, many, many throughout the history of your planet and other planets. When, if there is planets with elections, so to speak, in that way. But that is not what I am talking about with great changes coming to the Earth. That is not what I was speaking of, no. Okay, thank you. And is there anything that you want me to say to Liav? Is there anything what? I did not hear that. To Liav, the guy that chants you here in Israel. Is there something ah. you want to tell him? No, we are friends already. He knows all the things that he know, needs to know. And I can just say, hello. That is it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, we have any more questions or should I go? Well, we love having you here, Bashar. If you can stick around, we do have a few more questions for you. Mm, I can. Wonderful. Okay. Um, we have a question next from Liney. Um, she had just quickly asked, she wanted to know how close your ship was to our planet. It is usually, usually over the area called Sedona, usually, but not always. But we are there for the energy vortexes. They help us to recharge. And it is a safe place for us. And there are other ships that like this area as well. But yes, we are outside the atmosphere, quite a ways outside, but not gr a great ways. We are between places, if you will. Very interesting. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay, we have a question next from Jess444. She said, what entities are within my chakra at this time trying to lower my energy? And can I please receive help in releasing them to remove my to improve my health and clear my chakras thank you bashar and much love at this time let me see your chakras who is this that is saying that jess 444 ah yes i know who that is 
Right now, part of that feeling, yes, there is an entity in your, there is only one. But the other part is the fourth dimensional energy that is affecting all of the earth, making fatigue and different things. Many of you will have been feeling fatigue since the seventh and eighth or ninth of this month. But that will soon clear up. However, yes, you do have an entity within your oral field. One moment, please. There will be a moment that you will feel a jolt, not a strong one, but he will be removed. Does not matter what his name is. He was just an energy vampire of a small nature. Poof. Ah. <laughs> Poof. Let him go. Thank you, Mashar. <laughs> I'm sure she's very thankful for that. Wonderful. Um, he can go now. Blah, he's released. Oh, that's so good to hear. Okay, great. Um, we have a question next from Barbara in the YouTube chat. Yes, Barbara. Hi, Bashar. I'm reading the question for Barbara. Um, she said, I would like to hear more about the economic financial collapse that we're supposed to have in about a year's time here in the U.S. What's going to happen after the initial uproar? What's going to replace the monetary system? And how will we get food? What about housing? How are we going to get the things that we need to live if we don't buy them anymore? Should I spend my inheritance now and have fun before there's no more money? That's your question. I would have to write volumes to answer that. <laughs> but let me tell you this. This is what is important that you understand. There is nothing that you can do about the economic collapse. You can sell, you can buy, no matter what you do. It will not affect... It, it will be what it is, and it is not completely sure i am not completely sure what it will be because many people need to make decisions before we will know exactly what that future looks like do you understand i cannot tell you what's going to be the outcome from the other side because i am not on the other side i can select a now from the past present and future but that now can change why can it change is because there are many things happening to involve change, to bring about change, to present itself in a different way at all different times. Those that are outside your planet are also thinking about how to help you without being too interfering, without breaking the prime directive, so to speak. They are trying to help without helping too much. But I cannot speak about wh what it will be because we don't know exactly what that will be yet. It is still, it is close by, but soon is a relative word. It can be soon a day or soon 10 years, but it will not be that far. But what I do know is this. Great changes will come. Great understanding will come. And do not worry about how to buy food. My greatest concern is that people get their medical supplies during this period of time. Enough food. That will be the greatest, the food and the water and the medication. Those are the things that are necessary, but that may not even be a great concern if it moves out farther. The farther away that the collapse is, the, the less powerful it will be. That is all I can say for now. Okay. 
Interesting. Thank you, Bashar. Um, okay, next we have a question pr from Pavel. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you. Great. I have a question. If uh, Are you uh, familiar with the entity called the um, Atlant uh, Suran, the Atlantean, he is channeled yes. the Mount in Israel. Um, I, I continue. Yes. Um, can you, uh, from your point of view, can you uh, uh, tell me the difference between his uh, philosophy and yours, and what you view on his way of doing things? Oh, our, our views, well, that is a very long answer. But let me make it short by saying this. We are different personalities, and we think see things from a different point of view. We see different aspects of the truth. Now, you say as you look back into the history, there is only one truth. This is true, but when others look at it they perceive it differently and so whenever truth is in question you must go back in a time machine and look at it ex exactly as it is now i have not done all that with all of atlantis i do not have the time for that i must move forward in my uh, movements and helping with all the things that i can help with on this particular planet and on my own planet. So his perception of the truth about that time and my perception of the truth from that time may slightly differ, but uh, that is all. Sir, sorry. Right. We do sorry. have great sorry. ideas of what happened. What is, or what is what? I'm sorry, the question wasn't about Atlantis. The question was about Suran, um, entity named Suran and his philosophy yes. now he's channeled now in israel about uh um, he's talking about doing things like you say but you're talking more uh, from the um, uh, mentally mental type um <clears throat> thinking and he's talking more about emotions and yes do that doesn't mean that we're that doesn't mean that we can't come to the same conclusion why? Because the mind, body, soul, and spirit are all connected. Do you understand this? If he talks about the emotions, that it will, he perceives it from a, that point of view. My point of view is more intellectual, but it does perceive the emotion, the spirit, the body, and all these things. That does not mean that we are that different. We just are looking at things at a different perception and a different point of view. Okay, does that make sense to you? Yes, sure, sure. And <clears throat> one, um, okay, never mind. Thank you very much. But the thing is, let me continue with that just one moment, is that I take some of the emotions out of it because I find them to be distracting. Where he puts the emotions into it, to make you grasp it in a different way. Does that help even more? Yes, yes. But he's really um, talking about um, about a, a work that you have to do. Like if you, <clears throat> you're talking yes. about more about changing the way, changing the world by changing your perspective. And he's saying that you have to work, 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 work on that. And after you done working and it's nothing, you don't have emotion attachments, it's going to change anyway. It's, I don't agree with him completely because I see things in a different way from a different perspective. But I see why he feels that way and because he is coming from a place where work, work, work was the answer. I'm coming from a place where work is not the answer because I do not believe that you have to work as hard as he thinks you do. Okay, thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. 
We have another question from Krellick. Yes, yeah. hello, Shar, again. Uh, I remember you saying earlier in one of your sessions with Daryl Anka about how Earth humans make good TV. Um, are you able to elaborate on what you meant by that? Earth humans make good TV, is that what I said? Yes, about how sometimes some aliens tend to watch humans. Yes, you do make good TV. It is very entertaining. It has interesting psychological effects on the people. Now, I don't mean that it is always good, but there is some positivity that comes through with the negativity. You seem to be very caught up in and interested in how negativity affects your population. Now, I find that to be very interesting because sometimes it can be positively effective and other times it can be negatively effective depending on the point of view of the person watching. So therefore, I find your television very interesting. Thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> next we have a question from Sarah. Sarah. Hello, Bashar. Hello. Uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, I have a question. Pleasure. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I have a question. Um, while you've been channeling, I've been feeling some sort of bubbling energy in my brain and I was wondering if you knew what that was. Yes, some of it is that fourth dimensional energy, but um, other than that, you have a great connection, a very, a very strong connection with the Hathors and they're actually doing some work with you at this time. They would like to straighten out some of your emotional ties. You continue to let the emotion affect you in a greater way than it should at times. And there are people in your lives that can really pull on your emotional strings. And for you to be as successful as they want you to be and as successful as you should be, Emotions not necessarily have to go away or lessen, but they have to be put in proper perspective. And this is the information, and this is the work they are doing with your brain. Okay, but there's something connected to your species at the moment, it seems, because this is brand new, and every time I connect to your energy, I get this bubbling sensation going on. I'm, I'm very grateful. Yes, bubbling sensation would be a good thing. Yes. But do you know what that is? Um, it is because, well, we are connected. Uh, it, it, it is that your nows and our nows are, and we can figure that out together. Or we can just know that there is a connection through time space. Or we can know that you have had a past life with our species. And there are many different things that it could be. But a connection with us is always a positive thing. <laughs> All right. Very well. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry I did not answer that the way that you would have liked to. However, I cannot really exactly what that is because it has a perspective that is very personal only to you. And I cannot read it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Bashar. Uh, we have a question next from Khan. He is asking, how would our work be able to help with first contact? What would be the best way for us to um, help in terms of maybe either drawing or making movies or any sort of art or science or anything? You are helping quite a bit con because your art is being seen by many people and enjoyed but it is also giving a perspective of non-human existence you understand this that you are showing what other species look like 
You are showing that other species have a sense of humor. You are showing that other species are developing and working with us in some way. Therefore, your work is being noted, but you're saying, but it's only noted above by the people that are already aware of aliens and already aware of outside influences. Not quite true. There are those that will look at your art because they are art lovers and love the perspective of what you are doing. And therefore, what you are doing is helping others to be interested in the future of their planet. Yes, that is wonderful. Um, great. I, would you have any recommendations for others that, um, you know, maybe aren't so artsy? In general, for the human race, what else can we do other than what we've, we know so far, those of us in these communities? What else we can, can we do to help? The biggest thing, humans can do who are enlightened and listen carefully because that is the key you are have to be good listeners you must listen to what others are saying and respond to what their belief system holds because you cannot spurt out about aliens and about the future and about things that is not within their belief system or within their personage. So you must listen to who they are and be enlightening in a way that makes them interested in further knowledge. Eventually, when they are interested in further knowledge, when they realize that there is truth in the things you say that they may not be aware of because of their belief systems and who they are, they will begin to research in their brain thought process that brings what you are saying into them. But if you were to challenge their belief systems and not listen and just react, you would lose them completely. That you is also an example of a good human being not being someone that would be disrespectful not being someone that would be far out but someone they can relate to because if they cannot relate to you you will not be spoken to by them and you will not have the opportunity to get this information to them in a very practical way Absolutely. That is a wonderful answer and very helpful for us, I think. So thank you, Bashar. Um, do you have time to take a few more questions? We do have a few more. Uh, you know, I do not have much time. Daryl okay. has things that I need to go and do with him. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Well, hey, say hi to Daryl for us and we appreciate you stopping by today. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Bashar. We love you. Good day.
Lihat hutra sotoma. This is Santia from Sirius. Greetings to you. Hi, Santia. Thank you for joining us today. I have come to speak about something of a higher level. I see that Bashar was here, and he spoke very plainly to you. I would like to encourage your people to heighten their psychological gifts, their mental gifts, and their mental energies at this time. This is a perfect opportunity with the fourth dimensional energy and the changes in earth energies to become closer familiar with your own brain. There are many portions of the brain that are not open to humans because of one reason or another. It could be dangerous for some. But there are those of you that we need you to open a greater amount of your gifts to protect others from some of the things that are coming. To protect yourself and family. Hesitate to use this time for meditation to open up some of these areas of the brain for greater energy use, for greater gifts, for channeling by locating astral travel. Some of you are already working on these things, but no one has come through and actually encouraged it. From a very high dimension in your comparison, see that there are some of you that need to take charge when things are at their worst. And that is not to frighten you. We do not come to frighten. Because what will happen will happen whether you want it to or not. Change has to come whether you want it to or not. No matter what you change in your personal lives, the world has a mind that is connected in some way. All of earth beings are connected in their thought processes, in their spirit, and in their understanding of society and what that is. Society guides some of the events that happens on your world. In fact, a great deal of them, over 90%. Now, Governments influence the rest of that percentages, except for a very few individuals that may have some say in the universal causality of your planet. Now, with that being said, I would like you to look within yourself to see what talents above and beyond the third dimension that you possess because this can help further the first contact. It can help further the understanding of others toward the perceptions of things that are not within their perception at this time. Oh yes, I heard Bashar say about how you should be to help those that have great belief systems to change and to alter themselves to become part of the, the new thought process, the greater idea that all should be involved in the universe 
and all should be involved in the galactic works, and this is true. But you must do your part as well. I hope I'm not speaking above what you can understand. But many of you have gifts and talents, but you are lazy and do not meditate or do not want to push forward. Or you do, but you have no drive for it. Let the energies that are coming and that are here help you to become that greater person because I see that many of you are to be the leaders. Of course, this place called Human Colony is but a small place right now, but it has a great amount of leadership, a great amount of thought energy, a great amount of talents that are not being used. Do not fight among yourselves selves. What does that do? Your opinion is equal to someone else's. So why must it be better? It is not. If you make your opinion better, you make yourself less. Why? Because if you push to be better and you are not what you are, then you are less than the least among you. I know that is hard for you to perceive, but when they say the first shall be last, if you push to the head of the line, you may be the first to get punched because you do not know what they are giving out. If they are giving out punches, you will be first. People believe that if they are the first to be someone or something, that that makes it greater for them. It is true in humility, but not in pride. When you come to a great place out of humility, you don't even realize how great you are. When you come to a great place in pride, you feel greater than other people, and you are not. These words I give to you because I see that among you there are bickerings and backstabbings and negativities. And why you do it? You want yourself to feel better? Or you feel attacked? Why do you feel attacked? Is because there's something in you that needs to be released, not in them. Of course, if you say they are negative, they may have negativities in them that need released also. But it should not affect you unless you have something that is negative and is stirred up by it as well. For those out you, there that say, I like my negativity. My negativity helps me to ground. My negativity helps me to be who I am. Well, you know what? Your negativity will never help you be great. It will help you stay exactly where you are. You do not understand that your negativity is not really for you, but against you. Now, I know you cannot get rid of all of negativity. Some remains to keep you in balance. To keep you grounded a little bit. To keep the yin and the yang in balance. But there's those of you that have an overabundance of it and it needs to go. The fighting needs to stop. You are the leaders. If there's fighting among 
you need. Who is to take charge if you can't even agree that you are equal? Agree that one of you is wrong. Being right seems to be the thing to be on your planet. You must be right, you must be the one in charge, and you must be the one in control. Fine. Do it out of love and humility, not out of pride and wanting to have the most. These things, these greeds, are why your Earth is where it's at at this point. And they will bring your planet to a halt at some point. And then you will have to decide how to move forward. If you decide to use your greater gifts and bring in the positivity that is you, does the planet have to stop and take realization of what's happening and move forward? I think that is what I am trying to say right now, is that it does not have to stop if you make the right moves, if you purge yourself of your pride. Pride is the one thing that keeps you, some of you, moving forward. I'm so good. I'm better than you. I have more gifts. I'm going to be a leader. Wonderful. I'm glad that you feel that there is something about you that is very positive and that is useful. But when you put it out there, in a way that people see it as overbearing and they don't want to be around you, then that's not good leadership. You want to draw people to you. You do not want to push them away. You want to draw people to you with your love, your concern, your understanding, your purity of heart in the thoughts that you actually care about these people and not just yourself. It's a harsh thing, but you are coming into a time where you need to be loving, generous, and beautiful leaders, enlightened. Embodying the truth, bringing those under your arms and training them up to be great leaders as well. This is a group of great people. You have many talents, but start seeking out the others. I know you said, I've been seeking, but I cannot find anything. I've been seeking, but everything is eluded. I, I, I don't know where to search. That is when you have to realize you need to go in and find God in here first. The God inside. The God who presented himself to you at your birth. He is there within you. Find him first so you can connect to him on the outside. But if you cannot find him in here, you will not find anything in here. You will not find much in yourself without the God flame because he is all that you are. 
So come and talk to him first. Before you can enlighten anyone else. Or find the God that is wanting to speak to you from the outside. Is there any questions? Yes. I have a question. There, come closer. What you just spoke about just really resonates with me because I feel as nothing. I feel like there's nothing in my heart. There is, though. I don't. Find the God within, the flame that's always been there, the flame that made you love in the first place, the flame that made you want to do something for mankind in the first place. Here today, what desire was that that brought you here? There is something there, but you must find it. It's been hidden by all the things from society, all the things that people say to you, and all the things that you say to yourself that make you unworthy of moving forward. But you are worthy to move forward because God is your basis. And because he is your basis, you are worthy. Do not think otherwise. And do not feel constricted. You see, you stop yourself from feeling because sometimes it hurts. Mm -hmm. But hurting is part of all feelings. And you know what? It builds character. And it, you can lean back on the pain and say, I don't want to feel this again. Let's move forward. Do not dwell in it, but make it a trampoline into something else. Jump forward from your pain, from your failure, from your confusions. Some of you have made it a great basis for something that you never want to experience again. But underneath that, is the God flame this for all things. The understanding, the truth, and the knowledge that came in first. But yes, find the flame again. Find it. It's why you're here. But I feel like people don't want to be around me. Am I pushing them away because of that? You feel like people don't want to be around you because you don't want to be around you sometimes. And that is what you must change. You are a wonderful, beautiful, loving person. Why wouldn't people want to be around you? There are people here that love who you are, but it is you that are having trouble loving yourself. Love yourself. You are worth being loved. And when you see that God's love for you that has always been there is the love that is you, then you will not see that people do not want to be around you, but just the opposite. You will want to be around them, and they will flock to you as well. Thank you. Yes. Is there any other questions? Yes, thank you. We do have a few more questions. Um, we have a question next from Jose, uh, jo Josue. Um, Jose, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Uh, I'm, but I'm not sure if he can talk. Jose. How do you spell Jose. it? Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Um, so, so, yes. I, so I wanted to ask, um, so I live in New York City, I, and I've been traveling to the West. Uh, I was just uh, in California last week. Um, and every time I go to the West, it's like, it's easier for me to get grounded. It's easier for me to 
feel things okay. and just connect to inside. Uh, but uh, I always wonder, if, are there places here in the city where I can feel that? Let again? me explain it's like, what is happening. First of all, you're from a very dense energy. New York City has a very dense energy, but a very powerful energy as well. Very many powerful people are there, but not all of them are positive. And there are not a lot of very strong vortexes in that area. But when you go to California, they're all along the coast are vortexes holding it up to the waters. They yeah. have been put there by many people. And the vortexes are very positive. And so when you go there, it is easier to ground because also you're closer to the center of the earth in the sense that the, the shell of the earth is thinner there. And so you can ground a little easier. But it's also a state of mind. You can ground easily right. anywhere in the world if you so desire, if you so put your intention on it. But I can understand that physically and mentally, it is easier to ground there. So, is there another question that goes with that? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, would like to know more specifically if I can. Uh, well, I know I have to you know, keep up with my practice and yes, go out and try to ground myself. But is there a way or, or a place where I can try to connect with entities here in some way? And also, just to kind of finalize that question, it's a little bit like three in one. I don't, I, I know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, what was the hand that I saw in my room a year ago? So this was my spiritual awakening. Yes. I saw something that I can describe as a x-ray hand that was coming towards me. Yeah. And just, I just got up and I knew that I needed to do research on the worst yoga and meditation. I put them together and ended up at a retreat center the following month. Yeah. <laughs> what the hand did was show you that you are, your mind was awakening. But not only your mind, but your heart and the spirit of God that is you was awakening. The hand was to show you that you are not alone in this. That you assistance always. That there is places to go and beings to speak to and that you are never alone in this journey. Take heart in knowing that they care who you are and they want you to move forward. This hand was like the hand from outside, the God hand, if you will, showing you that the inner light was starting to shine. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Sorry, I uh, got your name. <laughs> Sorry. I've I'm been running errands. Sorry. I am Cynthia, and your name is what? Josue. I love that name. Tia. Thank you. My mama found it on the Bible. She didn't know what to name me. And. And the the are always strong. They always have meanings that stretch beyond the earth place into the spirit realm. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You. Uh, anything? Is, if I may add something to that, is there anything specific, more specific about the hand and who or what was? If it was a. It was a spirit hand. I believe it probably was an angel in my understanding of yeah. how they present themselves in these times. It looked like an x-ray vision hand, didn't it? Yeah. It was them showing you that they are made of similar materials.
materials to you when they come into your realm, but that they are from other realms. So it was the hand of an angel, as I thought. Is that what you thought it Great. was? Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Satya. Thank you very much. Santira. Santia. I'm sorry. Santia. Santia. Sorry. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much love. Wonderful. Thank you. What? Okay. Um, next, we have a question from Jonah. Um, first, she's asking, will there be changes for the hybrid people who do not have a conscious knowing of that which are living now on our planet during the hybridization program? Yes, there will. I think her name is pronounced Jonah, but you might pronounce it Jonah. Let me tell you, yes, there will be changes. Every person that has hybridization within them, which is many, many of your humans in this realm, will feel changes in themselves and feel closer to Mother Earth in many senses because this is the, a planetary thing. Your hybridizations have come from many different species from many different times and your past lives will represent these different integrations of these different species okay interesting thank you um, she also has another question she wanted to know how can we develop our gifts and talents only by meditation? I feel we have different gifts, but as me, I know I feel, uh, but I don't know what it, what my gifts are and how to really develop them. This is all I can say to you. Seek and you will find, because you will find your gifts at the appropriate time. But what I am seeing now on this planet is the time is now for many of you. The time is now for many beginnings and many endings, as it was said earlier. And this is a time for human colony and the people therein for many be beginnings. And Jonah, you are wonderful and gifted, and you have a great communication skills you have great enlightenment and can speak to others very easily and lovingly I think that somewhere in that communication within your heart you will find light that is shining the direction that you should go Okay, thank you. Okay, um, next we have a question from um, Sheer, if you would like to go. Hello. <clears throat> How are you? Sheer, continue. Well, people here already ask about abilization, about how to develop their abilities and the new beginnings exactly the three things that i was wondering about myself <laughs> yes so if someone i would try to make it short if someone has a lot of hybridization is there something you should do being if someone want to see beings aware is there something you should do and see do you see anything that I should know about in my future, for saying. First of all, let me ask you some questions. Have you noticed any changes in yourself lately? Um, maybe, maybe minor changes, like a certain area in my brain that is tickling. You know, what about weight loss? Condition. Have you noticed any weight loss? Maybe. Yes, 
There are things happening to you right now. It is a beginning for you, Sheer. You have many beginnings, and they come in layers. Beginning after beginning after beginning. But this beginning will be one that will take you a great distance. And that is all I can tell you at this time. But there will be more than just this beginning. But some will take you small distances, and others will take you great distances. And this new journey, you see small changes in your body, in your thought processes, but there will be a great change coming soon. How soon, if you can, if you can say? How soon is soon, my friend? Hmm. Very but, soon. Okay. Thank you very, very much. And have we ever met? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know we're coming close to the hour end here, but uh, I know we also got started late. Do you have time for some more questions yet? A few more. But okay. Th things are running late, and people must go to different places, and so must I. So only okay. a couple more questions, please. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Jasmina from the YouTube chat. She was asking, uh, I'm moving to another country in Europe. How will Europe deal with these changes? Uh, she's speaking of the upcoming changes everyone keeps talking about, um, the, the beings and yeah. uh, so forth. She says, I also, I can hear, or can I please hear any messages from my guides at this pivotal time? Let's do the first question first. Europe is very strong in unity. England has dropped out. They have even become a tighter union in some ways. You will understand this in the future when things will change. As far as your guides are concerned, your guides are speaking to you daily. Otherwise, you would not be leaving your country and going to another. You are feeling comfortable in this change in some respects. And I think that you will find that there will be a great deal of satisfaction with this change. Also, physically, you are going through some changes now, but release the pain to the sky sometimes and let yourself relax. You are going through many past life pains that you should not be able to, or you should not have to deal with at this time. They should be alleviated by someone at some point. I will help you with that. Speak to your guides. They are listening. Okay, thank you. All right, um, next then we have a question from David. Continue. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, greetings. Uh, thank you. I uh, was curious about, I've been told that um, I have connections to Sirius and was interested in learning more about that and also the connections of uh, my healing ab abilities. I've told that I'm a powerful healer and I was curious about if you know when that had begun, did it have anything to do with the time uh, with Jesus and Mary or anything like that? Good question in the respects that it is a spiritual beginning. Whenever you follow the spirit, things of the spirit increase. Therefore, yes, in some respects, there have been lifetimes when your spirit has been high, your healing abilities have increased. In this lifetime, you're experiencing many different elements of many different past lifetimes. However, 
someone has come and tried to block all of this and tried to f make it all fail, but it will not. If you keep moving in the direction that you are moving now, the abilities will continue to grow and will be known by many. And you will be able to touch many and heal many. The thought processes that you have now must be healed in the sense that fear should not be part of your life. Fear should be weeded out and confidence in your love and your wanting to give to humanity should be first thought and not fear for yourself because you are protected. You see, many of us find that we had fear about existence and fear about things happening to us or the people around us. But when you give that over to realizing that you were born to give to the world, that you were born to heal many people, how can you live in fear when that holds you back from the greatest and most wonderful gifts that you can give to mankind? Yes, this is good to hear. Thank you. This is awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, we have a question next from Pavel. Yes, hello. Hello, Pavel. Hi. It's really nice to hear uh, from you. I really uh, loved what you said. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, can you give me um, some advice from you? On, the, on what? On your spirituality? Uh, just whatever comes to you. <laughs> so if so you see something, you can help me with. I can see that you are a, a kind, loving and giving person. That in t that people outside of you are sometimes what hinder you. The things they say to you confuse you a little bit sometimes. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. You are one that can rise up and become a leader also. But you do not see that self and you do not see that side of yourself as a leader yet. Not fully. But... You are coming to a place where your journey will lead you into a greater understanding of what positive gifts you can give the world. Pavel, you are a great energy of love and kindness. You are a good person. And many people see this, but sometimes you listen too much to society. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But be aware, the God within you is strong. And he will help you to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. One more you. question and that will be all that I... I will do. Okay, sure. Well, we did have a question from Sazagin. Um, one second, we have to go. Yes. Um, okay, well, I'll push through the echo here. Sazagin? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry? There is oh, a question um, in the room as well that I will answer. Oh, great. Okay. First, uh, Sezgin was just wanting to ask you if you guys have met before or if he has channeled you before. Let me connect to you. Yes, I have been close by you many times. And you have felt this energy with you, have you not? Yes. You have felt me and my energy before. Okay. No question. Wonderful. And well, thank you for question? answering that. You are welcome. 
in the room and come to this microphone. They tell me if you ask it, you will not be able to be heard. Hello. Hello. Very nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Um, I, Speak to the mic. I have uh, a question about uh, a galactic sister. Yes. Named uh, Errol. Yes. Who came to this planet uh, many decades ago. Yes. And was uh, interviewed and given an opportunity to uh, enlighten us. She has since passed on. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. But go ahead. Well, I, I there was so much information. Um, I guess I want to know the truth. Yes. Did she speak the truth? Was it, yes. Was there, was, was there any shades of gray in there? Or was it black and white? I understand your question, and I will answer it. Arrow was a great being. She spoke very honestly. She spoke from her heart, and she was one that was captured at one time. She is now in spirit. She no longer exists in bodily form. She had caught something from your planet that was incurable by their planet and therefore has not survived it. She did speak the truth. The percentage of truth, and, and according to her perception, was about 97%. So she was very, very honest and gave a very true and factual presentation. Good to know. May I ask you one other question in regards to what she said? Yes. She mentioned that this was a prison planet and that all of the spirits that have um, come into human form here repeat because they can't escape this planet to go to other planets or where they originally came from. Um, and that before we enter this planet again, um, our uh, memories are erased. And so <clears throat> my question is, is there, is this true? Is there a way to get, to re be released from this planet? And those of us that are trying very, uh, very much so to evolve on this planet. Yes. When we uh, leave this bodily form and we go to wherever we do go, which we have been told to go to the light. Mm. Um, do we at least, when we come back, have the same knowing do we contain the same knowing that we have right now? Yes. Will we bring that back with us? Or do we have to start all over again? Let me answer that. That's many, many questions. <laughs> but let me tell you this. Her perception of this planet was that it is like a prison planet. However, the prison is in a mental way. She was being very honest. but. Free will and over soul do exist, and people from this planet can be trapped on this planet like no other planet, in the sense that there are more ghosts here and more of those kinds of spirits. However, that does not mean that every being is a ghost when they leave. There are many have left. In fact, a great deal of the population goes to the oversoul very in percentage wise there is only five percent perhaps that are trapped and there is a great reason for this and it's because of the belief systems that were developed here on this planet conceive of they cannot understand or be represented in any way shape or form by any of these beliefs and so they stay here and are trapped in the prism of their belief system because it cannot relate to those of any other belief systems. But yet now we are coming into a time on your planet where they, they, they can be released because their belief system will be. And also the other parts of your question is that yes, 
when you anyone comes back into the human a human body form if you choose to come back to a human body form you have that choice you cannot come back if you don't want to you don't have to come back but if you come back all your memories are erased but behind every chakra it is all your past lives no matter where they were from you still have them and that you always will in the chakra system because why you may need to call on some of this information to deal with this life and so therefore yes you will have all your information intact always 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 now it may not be enlightened immediately when you are born if your chakras were to be enlightened immediately you would be mad as a child you would have all kinds of information that you did not need but as you realize they brighten softly they brighten softly as you become who you are in karma in this world in your knowledge in who you are to be in some respects and ho who you are going to want to be in other respects so therefore there are many different perceptions of who you are as a child before you become anything more than a child and you know that by your contract you will have these certain events perhaps unless you change your karma or direction notice the hand with your hand your human hands have all kinds of directions on them for, for this life this is your life map and it does not have one line on it but it has many and many many lines and you can choose in this life to go many directions but there's one that's d deeper and darker than all the rest and this is the one that you follow if you are following your exact contract. Thank you. So therefore, and you understand out that, but um, yes, but for only some is this the pr prison planet. For only some. That is true. For some it is. But not for the multitudes because they can make their belief system fit here somewhere these are the ones that have been taken out quickly that their belief system cannot handle some of the things that they have lived perceived and understood and they cannot connect with the spirit because they are afraid of what they were not what they are but what they were And was, did I answer all your questions? I think there was more in there, but I forget them all. I have one related to that. Come, come forward. When we help, my name is Erica. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. When we help people pass to the other side, yes. is it okay to tell them to go to the white light, or is that what wipes yes. their memories? No, this is, this is perfectly fine. What you are doing is reassuring them that the white light is the way out of prison. Okay. It is the way out of their belief dilemma. And when you are helping someone out of that particular prison, which is trapped between worlds, you, they will see that at the end of the light, there are others that are there. And that's sometimes what frightens them. Let them know that these are relatives, these are people that are welcoming them in, not that are going to punish them, not that are going to, to make their lives worse. But this light, and it always will seem like, do not believe those that will tell you that the light at the end of the tunnel is false. That is wrong. They are trying to keep people in prison. They are trying to keep the prison going. And that is why they're doing that. They do not want people to pass into the light for some reason. But the light 
if you see the light at the end of the tunnel, why would it not be the perfect, beautiful light if that is your belief and intent? It differently, of course, it will be different. But if your intention, you will not be fooled by God. You will not be fooled by God. God will not show you a false light if there is not one. Okay. That's very wonderful. Thank you. Because when I listened to all of her, what she had to say, it shook my foundation. I understand. And going to the light, I had a near death experience when I was a child and I went to the light very innocently and very quickly. Yes. So it just made me crazy. It is I'm innocent sure and it's a beautiful and it's innocent. And why would you not move to the light? It is what you believe. And your belief system is not inaccurate. If you you see God is there at the end of the tunnel, if that's what you believe. He's there. And, but there are many things that mankind and has put on belief systems that are not true. And therefore, that is why many people doubt and are trapped. So therefore, when God comes no, very soon to speak to his people, how clearly he will speak to his people and let them know exactly how he feels and what is true. So much. You are welcome. Namaste. Stay. With that, I must go. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We had a lot of burning questions to know who you are, though. If you would be able to tell us a little bit more about yourself, we would love to know. I am Cynthia. I am the ambassador to Earth from Sirius the one who will speak to mankind when necessary. And that is what I've done. Okay, very interesting. Uh, are we able to find out um, which Sirius you're from, uh, which race you are from? Well, I'm from a race that I call Sirius. But we are from the planet Seven seven light years to the left of the dog star. Okay, interesting. Um, people are asking if you're male or female or um, I am female. Uh, about your race. I am female. Okay. In gender. But that makes no difference. Of course not. <laughs> All right, very interesting. Well, wow, thank you for joining us today. Um, we definitely appreciate it. Do you have an R in your name? Is it Sentia or Sentira? Sentia. I, on my planet, I am sometimes called Sentira because the R on the planet shows my priestess also, my priestess side. It is only on my planet that they would add the R. Oh. Very interesting. Well, it's a beautiful name. Thank you for coming today. I, I personally really enjoyed your message you first came in with. We all loved hearing from you, so thank you. Thank you. Much love to you. Namaste. Hello, how are you? Who is it? Hey, Jim. Uh, Welcome how back. Are you? How is everybody? Back, Jim. Hi, Jim. It's Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. How are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. I'm doing very well. Very good. Have some water. Excellent. <laughs> oh, you sound very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm great. Excellent, excellent. Did anybody want to close with a prayer? I, I will. Yes, yeah, Sabrina. Yay, thank you, Sorry. Sabrina. Okay. Anybody else?
if anybody else wants to, just come in after Sabrina. Go ahead. If I can get all the this bubbling. Um. Ta to halia to alia lia tana liu kwa tono lo olu ali iulu ala no lo ali ta tan tu ali e yi olo lon tu ali aka tana li kwa la tu tono ataka tu Tana kwa lali e yo tu ta Tana aya yu ata no kwa ta ta su ata Yes many truths have been given and on many levels are they reaching out many hearts are standing by the fire of God and want to become a part of the flame. Many thoughts are being teased and that are being brought into alignment with many other things. Hearts are being moved and things are coming to pass that are going to change many thought processes as well. To speak of the energies that have been unleashed is to speak of great multitudes of waves flying against the shores. We see that there will be much turmoil, but from it there will be light and wisdom. There are times when the different layers of understandings do not meet and people understand things in different ways. Be of good cheer that God can bring understanding to all these perceptions. Know that you are loved and stay in the strength that all will be well. Let fear be as small as you can possibly imagine it to be because it is a great destroyer and fear must be wiped out in some of your minds for you to lead because you must have courage to know what to do. Ooh. All right. That was beautiful. Thank you, Sabrina and Jim. Um, Thanks. Wow. Uh, Michelle, would you like to do a little bit of toning for us? Are you up for that? Sure, I'd love to do that. Well, thank you.
Thank you. And thank all of you for being here. I hope you got something out of today. Um, yes. Uh, Jim, do you have to leave? Because Krellick had a quick question for you. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Krellick. Uh, actually, I wanted to say it offline. Oh, I'm oh, so okay. sorry. Okay. Okay. I forgot about and, that. Um, um, okay, we have, well, Sarah did want to do a blessing quick, if possible. Oh, yes. Then I think we can wrap up. That's great. Yes, Sarah. Okay, before I go, did you have a translation for that? Can't hear you, Sarah. I said before I begin, did you have a translation for the toning that she just did? I did, but there it is so multi-layered. Hold on one second. There was they said um, equate yourself with the new energies and make it you are equate yourself with the new energies and make it an, a life choice to move forward and stay ahead of the thought processes that are slow because the faster thought processes will save your life whatever that means do you know which beings those were no i do not i was getting oceanic Oh, Pat, yes, it's, yes, it could be a, a trinary language that, because there were so many levels to it. Yeah, there's something between the whale and the dolphin, but not exactly an orca. Yes, it was a trinary language now that you, that you mentioned it, and that is why I felt it in so many levels. Right. Very good. Okay. Salantania so kalati sa Imikia to lai Hasala to aya Stokoto latia sukuata Maya kia sa O sholoto aha Kinai who sholoto ana Taya si Akataya tana Kiluntana ku shela tuaha Kaya shuana Rakai kulataina Selanika Kami asaya Kosho ai Akia sakatuka Nai kola Aha talanaka To, now is the time for confidence and to keep all your fears in check. Do not be outlandish and rude, but time for you to be leaders. Time for you to pull all things in. Make sure you have control of yourself. Make sure that you are being logical and looking at things in a way that will bring good outcomes do not be lost in some of the situations or too interested in how they became what they are but be interested in solutions be interested in what is good for all thank you namaste namaste That was beautiful. Okay, wonderful. Well, with that said, um, unless anybody else wanted to add anything in, I think we can close up for today. Very good. And all right. All right. Well, thank you again, Jim. We love having you here as always. Thanks. Thank you everybody for joining. And sorry, that was my cat. If you heard that, he's going crazy. <laughs> I hope. Right. Of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, man. Um, yeah, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day and weekend. And let's keep the energies high. We love okay. you all. Namaste. Bye-bye. 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 Love you.